Welcome to the Video Made Simple podcast, where we help take the mystery out of video and break through the monotony of day-to-day communication for marketers, entrepreneurs, and clients. Watch and listen to the world's best video strategists, business leaders, and communication experts to supercharge the way you sell, market, and teach. How would the world change if you were an exceptional communicator? You said it the way you said it, because that's the way it needs to be said in the moment. Open your mind to the potential of video. It's all about showing rather than telling people. The whole idea was to create bingeable content. This guy actually made me a video. He took the time. That's probably the type of support and care I'm going to get when I'm paying these people a lot of money for their product. And lead your business into a world of modern communication. You don't have to spend millions of dollars. You spill the production to get an outcome. Within 24 hours of opening that email, we could tell they are watching that full 20 minutes. And video is the most powerful tool for convincing and converting. So we are in the driver's seat. With practical tips that will help you become a better video marketer. This is the Video Made Simple podcast. And this is only a measure. It can only get better. It can only get better. Hello, video marketing professionals. Welcome to the podcast that takes the mystery out of producing videos. Today, our guest is the very special Kate Robinson, director and founder of Communicate Consulting, who has successfully delivered organizational and transformational change, cultural reform, and employee communications through values-based leadership. She's taking her PhD in the University of Queensland and produced a 30-minute video based on her 80-page research on values-based leadership versus rules-based leadership, which we'll now go into in more detail. So by the end of this episode, you'll be inspired to use video as a communication tool for subjects as complex as research papers. I'm Chris Schwab your host and let's check in with Brandon Southall. Hello, Mr. Southall. Oh, hello, Mr. Schroger. How are you today? I'm really healthy, well, and feeling skinny. Why hasn't it been done or has it been done just not very well until now? What's that? What being skinny? (laughs) (laughs) Companies adopting videos for use in training scenarios. What's is there much of it going on in your opinion? I don't think so. I, I think there's still a, a wide open gap for a, a lot of video use. Speaking to to Kate off air during the the course of this project, and um, you know she was mentioning all these gold standards, which were you know by our standards quite quite subpar. So uh, yeah, I think there's room for video full stop and, and effective video as well. Well, here's our conversation with Kate Robinson. Kate Robinson approached us, yeah, 15 years ago, but we did plenty of work for like five or 10 years or whatever, and then she took off, and we never heard, we never heard from her for like 10 years. <laughs> she, she was based in Hawaii. She married a dude over there, had a kid, uh, came to Darwin, I think, settled there for a while, but we really didn't have anything to do together until the last six months where she's blossomed and popped up again. <laughs> To, to come work with us. And one of the questions I asked Kate very early on is why wouldn't you just find someone else, someone closer? Um, and what was your response, Kate? It's about who you know. Um, it's about the professionalism and the quality of work that's delivered. It's one of those things that it's like a builder. If you've got a good builder, you, you stick with them the whole way through. Um, you know, I know your work. I know we work well together. It's and I just sort of thought, why, why go through the hassle of trying to go out to tender when you've got the best? You know, it's one of those things where I think we've grown together. Yes. You know, I was with you in your early years, yes. but it was the fact. But what I really liked when working with you guys, you remember when we did that values um, video and I sat beside you <laughs> as we did some of that editing and then, you know, and I said to you, but I want this graphic and I want to build this. And you went and found someone that did that. It was about going nothing, no mountain was too high, no river was too deep. And then it's the fact that you were the collaborative creative process to to deliver something that was, you know, amazing. So it was, I sort of thought, well, now I'm in, in a, you know, a different state again, coming to someone knowing I know what you do, you can organise it all, we can do everything. We we're simpatico, you know. We're we're on the same wavelength, yes. and it's sort of like why why look for sure. elsewhere when you've got the best in front of you. As a communication specialist, what communication gaps do you find in research that you know are best solved using video? 
I think it's an actually interesting question to look at. So over the past two years with the emergence of remote working and learning becoming more prevalent, um, the use of technology to connect has increased. So we've even seen like we look at our kids going to primary school, high school students, and even university students have been removed from that personal face-to-face -face learning and have started to hear words like Zoom, pivot, home learning. And this has also occurred in many workplaces. So we've looked at annual conferences, traveling interstate or overseas, disappeared and interaction and conversation that were once done face-to-face -face are now being done via the keyboard or screen. Believe it or not, even this, this last few months, oh, pre-school holidays, even PNC school meetings have been conducted via Zoom or, you know, messaging being sent out differently. So a gap that needed to be filled was how do we disseminate information or relay messaging to the widest possible audience in the most engaging way? Video is definitely, in my opinion, an underused channel. So how do we make it as engaging, thought-provoking and entertaining? The difference between a six and a 60-year-old is height. Basically, mm. our beh internal behaviours mm. don't change and we like to be engaged and entertained no matter what the information that's been given to us. That all said, face-to-face -face is the most effective form of communication and video provides an alternative when physically it is not possible for us to be there. I, I was with a bunch of CEOs last week in a bit of a panel sort of open forum type thing and there was a lot of whinging. <laughs> There's a lot of whinging at how to adjust, how to change, what they didn't have, what was happening uh, economically and, and what was therefore happening to their business. We've found just in the whole video marketing space, and I suppose comparing ourselves to the UK and, and the US in particular, that Australia just is archaic to the point mainly just around slow adoption. You know, they're, they're just so like, I don't know if they're trying to watch it, what everybody else is doing or really get evidential kind of based uh, information to make decisions on, or they just don't have like the ability to rotate and move and, and do things quickly. I guess at a senior level, do you find the same type of thing? Um, I think one of the challenges to consider is they've got to have it as part of the strategy and the budget. Mm. So and anything in, in those soft skills, mm of human resources, personal development, mm. engagement, doesn't always get the funding. Yes. So that's the first thing. Yep. I mean, you don't have to spend millions of dollars. You don't do not have to do, you know, a Spielberg yes. production to get an outcome. What they'll do is, is they might put the screens up around the place, but may just do PowerPoint presentations mm. as opposed to looking at how to, and then it's actually what you actually put on those screens or why you're actually doing it. I think I've said this before, the three questions I ask is what do you want people to know, what do you want them to think and mm. what do you want them to do with that information? As I've mentioned, you know, to numerous people, we're time poor now, our lives are very complex, we're very busy. So it's like we want to be able to get information and a lot of these executives I think is understanding what is the role of communications and what is the relationship between leadership and communications, decision making, providing agency for your employees and getting them engaged to, to deliver what you need. Because as we've heard many a time, an engaged workforce, a happy workforce is a productive workforce, but we all like, as humans, as I said, human behaviour doesn't change. We like to feel engaged. Well, how do you convince the decision makers, the funders, that video is just going to be the best solution? It complements everything yep. so people learn differently they take information differently so you have to look at everybody's thinking patterns and and the other thing is is looking at you know what is the best and most effective way of getting people to retain information and to see and hear is absolutely king you know sort of thing so not just you know reading just you know if you say to people just read that email how many people get past the first two yeah. lines and go oh yeah oh. yeah whereas if they've got something i always call it the wiggles formula yeah if it's got color and movement yep. people are more likely to be engaged yep. not obviously retain because there might be something that they remember and go oh let me go read that or let me go look at something so it's about putting that into you know all communication you know the, the marketing and external communication uh, areas always have a strategy that's linked to the, to the business strategy and it's important that the internal communications and even the change management teams have a strategy so it actually incorporates 
well, how do we move people? And then knowing that we're all disseminate, we're working from home, we're not always there, we're time poor to be able to watch, a, you know, a video when it's convenient or watch numerous times to go, oh, let me go back, what did they say again? Mm. So it's about talking about how it, believe it or not, makes them look good. How does it make them deliver on their strategy? What is the value add? And if, because as from a, you know, internal communications or internal component that role does not or the internal comms people do not bring in revenue we support someone that does so it's been able to tell those business from a business perspective how doing this is going to help add value for them bringing in the money or achieving what they need to achieve you've got dry topics right it's one of those things it's like all research you know unless it's a particular interest yes you're absolutely right it's dry and so i guess i don't know if you're comfortable with us talking about our recent project but uh, you know that was a long video half an hour video i mean it's unheard of here at ridge films I mean, <laughs> 30 I was, I was seconds, about, <laughs> maybe, but 30 I, minutes. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking about that the other day because when we first started working together, we had like a five-minute video and then, we, mm. and then we were building values videos and that had to be around the five-minute mark. Then we were going to CEO roadshows and we were doing like one-minute sound bites or two-minute sound bites that went into an hour-long, you know, sort of presentation. And then I come to you with this and go, guys, can you can you do something that's thirty minutes, like almost like a documentary, and make it interesting? So yeah, this was quite a a turn of the books. You know, duration. We, and my audience, hopefully, uh, you know, consistent listeners would would understand this by now. But it's it's not about duration, but about how long you can hold attention for. And this this half hour <laughs> video is actually integrated into days of training. Is that right? It's the wider audience where it goes on to a learning and development platform within the national it's reaches i can't remember 36,000 odd people yeah. but it's for them to tap into yes. at will yes. so now the other option is that if say for example a leader wanted to do some of their own development with a team they could present you know have them all in a room and watch it and then of course i added in some notes on how to use that video and the discussion that it could bring together so yeah it was it was something that was is on a platform for the betterment of leaders from the most junior leader to the most senior executive in the organisation. Okay, so you've got two things, I guess, um, arguably against you. You've got budget restraints <laughs> and you've got duration of 30 minutes. How do you hold attention for that long? Yeah, it's, it's, it's that engagement factor, isn't it? Apart from my winning personality, Chris, you see this in documentaries all the time. So... You know, documentaries aren't all singing or dancing events. You know, you see it on the news. You know, it's like, how do we hold people's attention? Because it was such a, what we consider a dry topic. It wasn't marketing. We weren't selling anything. We were providing information or research data that, and trying to tell them how this impacts them and how it would better them as leaders. So it wasn't about sensationalising it. If I can delve into a little bit of theory, um, you know, it goes back to what we call Aristotle's dating back to that philosopher, ethos, pathos and logos. So what ethos does is it establishes your credibility, the pathos draws on their emotion and the logos is then the logic of it all. So just keep that in the back of your mind as we look at that. So what video can accomplish um, is by, you can actually introduce the researcher. So uh, there's a few elements to here. So first of all, introducing the researchers. So I'm on screen and you've, you know, got the blurb down the bottom of who I am and what my credentials are. And of course, uh, introducing myself. What also can provide is what imagery you use. So it's about using, and like I gave you, I gave you some B-roll that, you know, could, that was backgrounded by... You know, my voiceover. It was but- pretty good B-roll. I got it. I just, I just <laughs> going to put that out there. I, I don't know if we can actually uh, talk about the the client. Are you, are you happy to, to name the client? I, I can, yeah, I can name the client. It was the Australian Defence Force. Right. So and we're talking guns, so- fire, and planes, aircraft carriers. It's amazing, right? Like, <laughs> how good's that for an opening of video? Yeah. So that was um, that was provided by Defence Media. So they no, gave we me shot access- it, didn't we? <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. We, 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 we got we got a, 
<laughs> we got eyes in the sky, Chris, <laughs> eyes in the sky. Um, so, yeah, so we're able to get um, some really good good stuff there as well as some still imagery from them. So because I said to them, you know, this is for you, so, you know, if you can provide me that, that just will help with a little bit of that movement. Again, it's that wiggles form, a bit of colour, a bit of movement. What also we did part of that was using public access information on YouTube of two of the Defence Force chiefs, current Chief of Defence Force and former Chief of Defence Force, and we edited, you know, put the sound bites out of there. So, again, that gave us that credibility that literally, pardon the pun, bringing out the big guns, but it was also giving that introduction. So you're able to pull it in and before I just get on the camera to, you know, start the blurb. Yeah. You want to have that mix of still imagery, B-roll, moving imagery, data, as well as yourself. But a lot of the time, and we've heard this before, you know, even when you do your, your family holiday pictures, put a person in it. If you've got a person in it, it's people connect better rather yes. than just having, you know, a graph there yes. or a chart there or a yes. statistic, you know. I mean, we see it with the weather of an evening, you know. They don't just put the weather up. They have someone pointing to it and giving it that movement. So you're breaking attention. You're breaking a lot of attention to try and keep it interesting, right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. But with, without it being jarring, you don't yes. want to move it so fast where someone feels like they're it's on a roller compliment. coaster. Yeah. But it's, you know, and the beauty of living in, well, past the 1970s is we've got colour. It's not just black and white. You're able to, you know, bring that, like I said, that wiggles, colour, movement. We had music. We remember we put music to the background or some of the imagery as opposed to just imagery with somebody yes. talking. There was that soft music in the background that sort of starts people using all their senses. It's not just, oh, I've just got to use my ears. They have to bring it all together without it being distracting and overpowering. So you've got 80-page research paper that you've got to try and transfer into this happy medium. You and your colleague presented the video. How much of that 80 page ended up in the video? You're probably bringing it down to only about 10%, really, 15%. Yep. Yep. But that's about the scripting. So with the, the paper, it was actually a research paper that was published in the Journal of Business Ethics. So, of course, they give you like ten to 12,000 words. So, and a lot of that you do backgrounding with a whole lot of theory. So it had to be about what was relevant or going to, you know, provide the best information to be used by the audience. So again, it's what do you want people to know? What do you want them to think? And what do you want them to do with the information? So by answering those three questions, so it was like going, I went, okay, so what is the problem we're trying to solve? What is the, you know, some of the things to consider and the findings? And then what was the outcomes of those findings? And then what what do we want you to think about at the end? And if you remember, we had those three propositions at the end so they could go away and discuss. Because when we look at it, we want people to, to listen, we want them to see, um, and that will give them their, for example, say 50% of retention. But once they start talking about it, writing about it, doing it, that then puts them into that top end of where, you know, that 90 to 100% of going, we've now got it. So the, the video highlights all those senses. Now, it, it could engage them to actually go then and read the paper and go, oh, I wanted to read more of what that person said, you know, because we only gave them a handful of quotes. There's about three quotes in there. But all right, well, you know, someone going, oh, this is rubbish, but well, we'll go read the paper and go, oh, yeah, that is actual fact, factual. That did come out. That was evidence. So it's about what you want people to do with that video, what, what the intent of it is, to the outcome that you want. We'll be back in a short moment with Kate Robinson. Producing videos at scale means adopting new processes. Nowadays, video is everything, and do-it-yourself videos should be easy and they should work. The Rich Films DIY video program is the easiest way to personalize your sales and marketing. You'll be able to produce sales video emails, record regular social media updates, and of course, look and sound amazing in every video meeting without the tech hassles. Create your own professional videos with the push of a button and go to ridgefilms.com.au slash DIY. Uh, Brennan, I'm going to get you to intercept here because I'm sure you've got questions. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So... Kate, uh, I suppose I just want to delve a little bit deeper into the story side of things. So how have you been able to use story or, or have you been able to use story to kind of relay some of your research so it's a little bit more palatable? Good question. 
any form of communication, you have to be telling a story. I mean, my professors are telling me this all the time with my thesis writing. Now, the thesis is 80,000 words, so that's eight chapters. And they're going, hey, you know, it's got to tell a story. It has to tell a story. So it's like any video or like any movie, you've got to have an introduction. You've got to, you know, set the scene. You've then got to build the drama. There's got to be a crisis and then you've got to find a solution. So research data is no real difference because research is about solving a problem, solving a crisis, uh, you know, about what what is the, the issue. Um, so using video was really interesting because, as I said, you know, starting with that, I, you know, I set the scene with the two um, former, or the Chief of Defence Force and former Chief of Defence Force coming out there bang and saying, this is what we want. And then I proposed the problem going, well, you sort of want that, that's great. Um, however, there are challenges. So we used all that B-roll to, to bring that into play. And then I introduced what my research, I had a research question. So it was, the video was able to bring, I think the first three chapters of my thesis <laughs> into about five minutes, you know, so just don't get me wrong, the thesis is a value, but it's just the fact that you're not gonna get someone to sit down unless they really want to, and read an 80,000 word thesis, but you know, to, to bring in that, um, sorry, the, the, the actual video was on my first study. So it was essentially, we bought in about five chapters into half an hour. Um, so being able to use the video, the imagery, because as I say, a picture paints a thousand words. Well, imagine what a video does. It paints 10,000 words, you know, which it did. It actually did. So I, I think storytelling is very important because it also engages the the audience because they want to know what are you trying to tell me? Is there an ending to this? Mm. Is there a climax? Is there an ending? So yeah, storytelling was very important. And I know we had lots of these conversations, you know, you know, in the pre-production discussion about what was I trying to achieve? What did we? What was the outcome that we were doing to do? So therefore, how did the flow of the video go to tell the story? Of my research elaborate a little bit more on you know what we mentioned right at the start around that gold standard like what was the expectation for for video content or was there any expectation yeah it's quite interesting because as as you know with arts and the creative it's very subjective so what one person holds as gold standard or platinum standard we won't marry mention the Berejiklian gold standard. But anyway, that's another story. Um, so, you know, what someone holds as a gold standard may not be the same for somebody else. And it's also what is known. So I've gone into organisations as an internal communications professional and what they saw as, as a high standard, I went, well, maybe my standards are too high. However, you know, I was able to introduce new strategies and, and they're like, oh, my goodness. And even that some of the CEO roadshows, you know, you guys helped produce with me with the words were like, this is schmick. This is just like, it was nothing they'd seen before. So it's, you know, I think it's about looking at what their expectations are, drawing on what I know as a communication or I, from my experience, I've learned as a communication professional saying, well, this is really what is would work better or this is how you actually engage an audience or this, you know, I think we looked at you know how you use graphics and imagery you know versus what is what you want to do when I say the you it's the universal you versus it's not about you it's about the audience you know so understanding that you know I drew on uh, Ridge Films ex you know years of experience and knowledge and also their marketing video background and sort of going I know we're not marketing but there are some things that actually will work on film that I wouldn't have known about. And that's sort of what we sort of, where we work together cohesively and collaboratively. And I've said this a lot, your company or the team, your team um, do something that is, seems to be a lost art and that's active listening. <laughs> so there's, you know, that, that art of listen, what is best, but also being able to have those um, constructive conversations where we may not agree, but how do we get to, well, let's, it's not compromise, it's constructive about going, well, what is the outcome and keep coming back to what is the outcome you want and then what is the path to get there? What did she say, Brennan? 
Oh, she said some lovely words. I'm going to have to replay it over and over and over. <laughs> good, good, good. Then we're making a video. <laughs> yeah, <to rewind. laughs> uh, I, I just, I'll just jump in here and say, you know, a lot of convince and converting for us is about evidence, about showing them examples. And thankfully, we have the 20 years now of, of history and examples and proof of concepts and all that sort of stuff. We can virtually show somebody what they're going to get and say, so, this is just your thing, you know, reskin it with your thing. This is it, you know, 90 seconds, blah, blah, blah. This is how it's going to shape up. And so there's a lot of confidence built in that process because they're like, oh, well, that's an easy decision. Decision's made. It's not like we're trying to storyboard some idea or whatever. It's like, here you go. Mm. It's quick. It's easy. There it is. You have a look at it. It'll be your thing instead of their thing. So I guess in your pitching to like someone like the Defence Force, which is a huge client, how does, how do you do that? Hey, is it just your words? Oh, hey, I'm, I've got the credibility, so this is going to be good. Or like, I guess what I'm asking is, how does that? How do you marry outcome and expectation versus you know their budget and and what's on their mind? It's an interesting question because um, it is a, a a a different sort of client. Um, again, rules based. Um, they have their own way of doing things um, and. At the end of the day, you've got to deliver what the client wants. Yes, there's a way that you can influence and shape what that may look like, but you've still got to respect that it's there. It's going to be theirs to do at the end. So, um, yes, initially the brief was quite different to what we ended up with. Um, so it was about going, all right, well, this is what I can deliver. This is what I have done. This is the capability um, and then they said, well, no, we actually just want this, which was a piece of what the bigger project was. However, the outcome um, that they got was what they wanted. So I think it's, again, it's that conversation. It's about understanding what your client wants. There's also I had references to uh, sh to illustrate that, you know, the work I have done before uh, to discuss what I had done. Uh, but at the end of the day, they actually came to me. I didn't seek them out. They came to me and said, we would like you to do this. So there was an element of creative licence. But then, you know, it was like, oh, well, if we want that, then, yeah, we don't have that sort of funding, which is fair enough, a government department. But it's about, you know, having that conversation and getting the best outcome. But, you know, I mean, they, they were happy with the result in the end. It was very different to what they had done before. Um you know, when I say different, the way that it was presented, you know, that again, I think we provided a, a solid story. It just wasn't looking like a lecture. It was a story. And I think now that's evidenced and hopefully will lead to more, more work either with Defence or with other organisations. But you're right, you know, it's some of it's built on your own credibility from, as I said, that ethos, pathos and logos about who you are, what you've done. They understood I had over 25 years or something of experience, 30 years of experience, the fact that I've done so many videos but also then looking at the research. So it, it is about, you're right, managing expectations but at the end of the day it's you, your client determines what they actually want but it's about how do you shape and influence what that ultimate outcome is. You're our best, Kate. Lots of love coming to you from the Ridge team here and um, look it's just been an absolute pleasure working with you on the Defence Force project um, it was great to revitalise our relationship again once again and I look forward to doing more with you in the future because it's just such an easy relationship when you've got that those years of, of doing things but with each other you've done a great job producing these videos and, and consulting in that way made it's made our uh, operation easier again I guess in this particular example with with not doing a lot around the original scripting just helping you script edit and, and refine was was just a, a joy uh, something fresh for us as well as uh, I guess fresh for you um, filming in, interstate with our crew up there so look I would like to just wrap this up thank you so much for having being on our show. Thank you so much. It's good to have the A-team back together. <laughs> the A-team. Well, that's all for this episode of the Video Made Simple podcast. Modern technology has already made it easy for us to consume content through videos. Using videos for educational purposes as complex as research papers may just be the next huge step 
to simplifying learning outcomes for you. Thanks for tuning in and see you next week.